there, Drats Magua here, and I got yet another 12-year-old react and the reaction video for you guys today. Sorry for the lack of upload yesterday. I did cast the seasonals this weekend, and I was a little bit beat up on Sunday because I'm still recovering from COVID. I think you can tell by my voice, uh, my nose is a bit clogged, <laughs> but we're getting there. And while COVID did stop me from reacting to Jin. It's not stopping me from reacting to Annie. And this is really big for me because I, I've i been asking for this champion for, honestly, ever since I started playing Legends of Runeterra. And the reason why is because I started watching a bunch of cinematics for League of Legends once I started playing the game. And Annie was a champion that appeared in quite a few of them. I even I ended up watching her uh, own cinematic, which is uh, actually one of the best in my opinion, and I just really like the idea of the character, and I always thought it would be really cool to see her in a card game because he is paired with like this giant bear, uh, sort of like Mouser. I forget the name of the bear, right? But she has a very different design in the cinematics that that we see here. But I was already anticipating this sort of like different approach because we saw her followers revealed yesterday, and they are kind of like this anime sort of like. Uh, schoolboys and girls so I, I figured that Annie would kind of have, like have those same vibes uh, some people were not really into that uh, I don't mind honestly I, I like it when they redesign champions I think they've done a great job so far like Caitlyn for example like she used to be very goofy before in, in prior designs but when she came to Legend of Runeterra she looked pretty top-notch and I think Annie is gonna look pretty good as well so I'm just really hyped nonetheless because I feel like she is Especially in a region like Noxus, there's a lot of really cool things that she can lead to. Though we see, I want to play a Gatum Hide and Burn in the description right here. So considering the uh, the followers that we saw yesterday, it may end up being some sort of burn game plan. But she has to spawn her bear in, in, in some shape or form. Like that's what I envisioned Annie to be. So I've been rambling here quite a bit, but this is like really big for me. Like just as Jin was, I was really hyped for Jin, but I was sick, you know, when they revealed him. Uh, Annie is just like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. So we're going to see. Everything is right. I'm recording everything. Okay, good. Let's, let's take a look at Annie. I like her face already. Mild spaghetti. All right, let's do this. Annie's temper burns bright. All right. Come on, Dibbers. It's playtime. Dibbers, Dibbers. It's a bear. What good's power? Okay, we saw that. Card, You're not right? gonna use it. Come out, come out. Oh, she's actually not a four drop. Everybody. Oh my, my always. That <laughs> doesn't matter. Everybody. Every, including me, we were all convinced at this point that every single champion was a four drop and she's a one drop. All right. All right. That's very interesting. One mana O2 with an attack skill that says with a skill, she can go with Jin. Uh, actually, she's a champion, right? So it doesn't. Well, yeah, she can go with Jin. How does that work? Uh, she can go with Jin, but you can still pair them with a different region, right? Because she does. I have to look into that, actually. Like, I'm not exactly sure if the. Um, the the origin uh includes champions yeah that's kind of bizarre i, I, th I think that may not be the case yeah i, I think if you want to play Jin and annie you have to play noxus with Jin. but i think Jin is kind of designed to go with noxus anyways but I'm, I'm kind of like rambling at this point but anyways attack skill i deal two damage to my blocker if it's dead or gone i deal two damage to the enemy in access instead so the same effect as the four mana shark from Noxus, and the level up requirement is, I've seen you, oh, so there's no bear? Well, the bear must come out when she levels up or something then. I've seen you play six fast spells, slow spells, or skills. Definitely tuned to combine with Jin. Uh, I was I was expecting that. And uh, so you need to play six different spells, uh, slow spells or skills, one mana, and already like applying a lot of pressure as well. Technically a one mana to two when attacking, but weaker when blocking, but a very, very powerful effect to have. And uh, allows you to work for that level up from the get-go just by playing her. So right now, very, you know. Wherever you are. Okay, <laughs> you know. that sounds like fun. It's Mr. Kai Thero. Kai. It's Kai Thera, Annie. Hey, Timbers. It's, it's, it's got there. Oh, oh, I want to play. This way. All right. What's your favorite, Block Block that and you win, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, she, 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 if you remove the blocker, she wins. Okay. I got you that level up though. Okay, this is this is. Uh, Look at this reality. Look how sparkly. Path of Champions. Ooh, what is this? Raven Bloom concert. A one minute landmark. Countdown ten. Create a Tabulk in hand. I advance one round for each fast spell, slow spell, or skill that you played this game. I love this. I don't know what I don't know what the fuck a Tabulk is. But I love this shit already. Oh my god. I burned school down. That's so cool. Now I want to burn you. First the smoke, then the fire, oh. then the timbers! Oh, here we go! When I look, create timbers. There's timbers. That's what I have to see. In hand. Attack. I deal three damage to my blocker and I stun it. If it's dead or gone, I deal three damage to the enemy nexus instead. Wow. Like I like wow. Just wow. But let's see, let's see Timbers. I wanna see Timbers. Is Timbers a six drop? Break, they'll burn. To, that's the bulk, that's what is generated. I wanna see Timbers! When I'm summoned, grant allies everywhere, plus one power, and for the rest of the game, all of your spells and skills deal one extra damage. Like, without this thing having to be on the board anymore, like, right? For the rest of the game, it's a summoning effect. It's like an aura effect. That's so dope, dude! That is so cool! Oh my god, that's just, this is just so cool. Because I, I was worried this is gonna be like some mindless burn strategy, but there's actually like a lot of synergy. It's, it's such a cool... It, it is like an actual cool burn style, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I love this. Timbers! I can see you, Timbers! No, she's gonna win! It's almost time! But play Timbers! Did you like that, Timbers? Wasn't it fun? There's nothing a good giggle can't fix! Show me Timbers! Okay, that, that's a two-minute spell. No, a two-minute spell. Disintegrate. Pick a unit. The next time it takes damage this round, kill it. Whoa! I I, I had to edit that out because I started like sneezing like crazy. This this card is so cool that I just started going like, oh, <laughs> two mana, fast speed spell. That says pick a unit. The next time it takes damage this round, kill it. This is just so dope, man. I, I, my God, I don't, I don't even know. Is this a searcher spell? Because if this is any searcher spell, then Annie's just insane. It, it may, it may very well be the case, and it is so damn cool. It's like a reverse ravenous flock in a way, right? It's, it's also like really neat because you know you, you kind of like give your opponent the warning in that regard. But it's like you can chain this. You can play, you can play a blade's edge, dude. Blade's edge like value just goes up the roof. You Blade's Edge, and then you, you play this on... No, you play this, and you Blade's Edge on the stack. No, no, no. You play Blade's Edge, and then you play this on the stack. And and you kill you can kill something for three mana combined. Oh, God, that's so dope! That is so dope! Oh, my God. Fire is beautiful. Billowing. Beckoning. Don't make me hurt you! Oh. Timbers! Okay, yeah. Timbers has Kirsten. There we go. Six mana, five, five with fearsome. Play stun an enemy, then deal two to all stunned or damaged enemies. Oh my god, Tibbers is a Tibbers. They won't hurt you. I heard this. Oh. Oh, I love this. I want to play a game of hide and seek. Oh, the yeah, he's, he's, he's so good. That one, I didn't expect that. Oh, this is so cool, dude. They're made for each other. Stay in school, Abby. You'll make something of yourself yet. Oh. You got a weird eye, Mr. Jin. <laughs> Lovely. Burn me. Yeah! Let's go make some more friends. Yeah, I'm gonna make a lot of friends in the ladder playing this shit. Oh my god. Okay, so Molten Shield. Molten Shield. See, no, no, no. No, multi shield is a skill. Never mind. Any, it, it is. Disintegrate is to any signature spell. That is crazy. She's so good. 
She's so good. Oh my god. She's actually so damn good. The Ravenbloom Conservatory is such a cool landmark as well. To bulk with the payoff. And we got and we have the the three uh the three units that we saw um showcased yesterday. So we don't even, we don't even have to like uh, well yeah we're gonna talk about the uh, the cards that were revealed be before as well because there's a lot, oh my god like these these reveals oh my god this expansion dude this expansion is nuts okay so let, let me actually disappear for a moment so we could uh, talk about these three well first of all we got the mana soul uh, student eh, eight three mana you know uh, three two is kind of like an engine that the first time you play a fast slow spell or skill you play magic embers which is a skill that deals one damage to the opposing nexus right so we have an engine here that's just pinging the nexus again and again and because uh it's generating a skill while doing so it's helping you progress annie's level up uh significantly faster so very important card then we have the spell slinger which is actually a spider because i, I think it's one of those bond jib scenarios in which the actual creature uh they're referring to is a spider and not the, the student <laughs> like the student's kind of like just like carrying him or i don't know it's just spider man vibes for sure uh as we have a two mana one one that has an effect of stunning an enemy upon play with a skill but if it's already stunned you can deal two to it instead uh so uh, you know like a different version of an arachnoid sentry basically and then we have the prefect the prefect is a three mana one three that whenever you play a fast speed spell slow speed or skill you grant her plus one power and she has overwhelm not as i really like the art for the prefect but honestly i feel like um the mana soul student is significantly more important though maybe you just play both to be honest as uh you know they, they take up your three mana slots but you also got to take into account like arachnoid sentry which is a really good addition to this this archetype so that's already a lot of three drops right so there's a, a, a quite a few decisions regarding deck building already incoming i love it i just love the fact that she makes a bear like that's that's what i really wanted out of annie for her to create the timbers right and uh, this really does meet up to my expectations and i just i absolutely love this i love that she's a one drop too i was so convinced that it was going to be four mana champions all across the board you know because of the joke of like four champions and four four mana champions because of Jin, and uh i'm i'm really happy that it'll be this was a really neat surprise is everybody was convinced he was gonna be a four drop including me and uh she's so much better this way so much better this way disintegrate is nuts annie is nuts you heard it here annie is bonkers absolutely bonkers of a champion and I cannot wait. Am I gonna make a Jin Annie deck like day one? I kind of don't want to do that because I, I want to build like them separately and then maybe combine them. Uh, I don't know. I, I'll see what I do. But I, <laughs> Jin and Annie are definitely the two ones that I'm gonna be venturing into first. I'm also very excited about uh, Ilawi. Is that how you say it, Ilawi? Because I, I I keep getting ripped on for for pronouncing here. I, this expansion is just so dope, man. Because on top of all this, like, shit with Jin and Andy, like, we have the tentacles as well. And then we have Bard, too. Like, this is... Oh, okay. I, I can't. Like, this is I, I, this is arguably going to be, like, one of the best expansions. Just, just saying. Like, potentially, like, Rising Tides level from what I'm seeing. This is just so damn good. And we're going to go ahead and go out to Twitter to talk about the cards that we revealed a couple of days ago. Because there's some more stuff that we're going to talk about. These are more cards that I really love about this expansion that essentially reinforce old archetypes. And they are very, very well designed. And I'm going to talk about them too. So without further ado, we'll be right back. And we are back. My right ear is ringing like crazy <laughs> after that stuff. <laughs> I overdid it. As you guys can see, we have the cards that were revealed today right here, right? We have the Tabalk with the Conservatory. We uh, showcased the different um, skills from Annie, which was have really cool arts, by the way, including um, Molten Shield. And wait, what is this? The Stunned Enemy? That's the, oh, no, that's the Timbers one. Okay. <laughs> and then we have the uh, the Magic Embers here from uh, the Mana Soul Student and the Stephen Sinews, which is the uh, Spell Slinger one. But we're going to talk about these cards that were revealed a couple of days ago and that are just absolutely absolutely amazing like i just man i i am gonna give this experience like a 10 out of 10 it's i swear to god it is it is that good it's it's actually nuts like I, especially like after how disappointing the last expansion was like i am so like i am on cloud nine man it's it's just really hard to express like how oh how amazing this shit is man like we have for three mana an actual like 
Well, I mean, the Relic of Secrets is, is, is pretty decent as a Shadow Owls landmark, right? But they, they've, they've generally missed the mark with the Shadow Owls landmarks in the past. But this one is just... It's just such an old design, man. Haunted Tomb, which, by the way, if you focus on it, it's actually the shield and the sword from Captain Leidros. And it's a three-mana landmark that has a countdown of two that says, Revive the Strongest Dead Ally. There's a lot of shit that you can do preemptively with this. It functions really well with Chronicler of Ruin because it plays with it on curve. And you can use this potentially even in stuff like Anivia. But you can also, maybe there's like some, some variants of like uh, Shadow Owl's Shurima with Talia that you could, you, you could do this with. Like you can play this and then have something like die and then play play uh, Talia and then just spawn it back. Like there's a, a lot of potential utility with Ephemeral as well. Like it's it's just a very exciting landmark. Like I'm so pumped to brew. Like there's so much room for innovation with a design like this that it's just so damn cool. It, it's it's so, this card is so cool. I'm not saying it'll be top tier, but from, from a deck building perspective, it's just so interesting. And I was so excited when I saw it. We got the Bakai Weatherclaw, Witherclaw, English, five mana, 5-4 from Shurima that says when an enemy is challenged, you give it minus 2 power this round. I also really like the design from this card. It's like an engine. It combines with the vulnerables from Shurima within, and you can use it to just weaken everything that you're challenging. All of a sudden, your exhaust take away 4 power, and you're able to uh, really capitalize from your Merciless Hunters. If you combine this with something like uh, a Shurima Bilgewater combination with vulnerables from that in the list, then all of a sudden you can have a really cool archetype, you know, with Renekton that can just, you know, completely shut down the opponent's uh, defenses as you as you challenge everything through vulnerable. You can also combine this even potentially with Shurima and challengers, sorry, with the Masia and challengers from the Masia as well. But I really like the potential of like really Focusing all in on the vulnerable synergies within the region and expanding upon others. And I really like this card with either Noxus or Bilgewater specifically. And I'm excited to mess around with it as well. Dragon Ambush. At first, honestly, the, the first impression that I got seeing this card is that it's a bit too expensive. But it does make sense because it's giving you two Dragonlings that have lifesteal, right? Uh, you're spotting two, two, one ephemeral dragonlings with lifesteal for five mana at slow speed. What I like about this card is that it further promotes the ephemeral archetype. This Ionia Shadow Owls ephemeral archetype that has never really been a thing, unfortunately. It has never really quite clicked. But with the addition of these cards and the revert recently of the one drop from the, uh, the Shadow Apprentice, I do feel like we may have something going on here. And I'm super excited to give it a shot. Like, I'm, I'm going to do my best to try to build a viable uh, Ionia Shadow Owls Ephemeral deck. And, and I feel like we have some very neat tools. This card can work really well with Shark Chariots because the Dragonlings, once you spawn them, will be attacking. Right, so you spawn that Sark Chariot as well, which can help you level up Hecarim even uh, sooner. And it's just, I can't even talk, man. I, I just, I love these cards so much. <laughs> like this is just, this is just great shit, man. Dragon Roost. Oh my god. Well, first of all, this card with Talia is the tits, right? Because you play this uh, with the Talia Malphite deck, and you're able to duplicate this with Talia. And because it's a three mana landmark with Countdown three, you're able to place on turn five as it's about to flip over. And on turn six, you get two Involius Vox. Involius Vox is not generally a card that you incorporate onto your deck because it's six mana five six, right? But getting it off of a, of a three mana play as an investment and being able to duplicate it is huge but not only that you can incorporate you know the the, uh, the clocklings the 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 countdown uh triggers from shurima that can uh, accelerate this and you have some really dope like it's a, it's a really dope combination with shurima like this card is just is so exciting with shurima and it really exaggerates that region combination that we don't see as much as of now and i think it's just a, a really 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 well designed card and, and it, it fits it and if it's really going to push that region combination and perhaps take us a little bit away from bandle city uh shurima for landmarks and uh, give us other options i just love everything about dragon roost really excited to mess around with that because i also really enjoy playing talia and i really enjoy playing talia mild fight i've always thought that it's a, a very underrated archetype and even though right now we see a lot of talia Ziggs, which is also a pretty decent deck, right? Like, uh, at least, you know, from, from the cool meter, I guess. I, I just really like this one instead.
uh, Celestial Trifecta. Well, not instead, but I, I like I like that region combination. And I love that we have something that actually uh, promotes it because that that deck was actually really lacking uh, on turn three plays. You know, even though uh, I mean you have the sarcophagus, right? You have the the um, uh, the three drop. Uh, well, what's what's his name? You know, the the, the fantastic three three drop from Shurima, the endless devout, right? Uh, aside from that, when combining with Target, you, you don't really have anything else. And now with Dragon Roost, it's it's so much better. Then we have Celestial Trifecta, which is a six mana burst speed spell that invokes a low, medium, and high cost Celestial card. I'm not sure what medium means. I assume it's like between four and six mana, like uh, with the you know the same range that the Solaria Priestess gives you. This card is extremely good for value, but people are saying that it's potentially a little bit slow. I do believe that in the right deck like this card could um could really shine in uh, mono and invoke targon and potentially variants of targon decks with the veiled temple that allow you to make up for that loss of tempo by giving you extra mana when combining plays i definitely think this is a phenomenal addition to targon it gives you something to go for besides sharp sight in the late game and it's it's really really neat uh, I'm not sure just how ultimately competitive it will be, but I do think it's something that the region definitely benefits from, and I will be messing around with it in both uh, full on target decks, but also I'll be trying to bring Veiled Temple back with stuff like this, and I think it's a very, very neat addition as well. Wings of the Cryo Phoenix. Now, out of all of these, I think this is perhaps the least um, impactful one, just because I don't think it's a bad card. I just think that... It uh, has trouble competing with It That Stares. Everything, ever since It That Stares got buffed to dealing three damage, I don't really see a world in which you play Wings of the Cryo Phoenix over that, right? You are technically able to play this on turn four with, with three spell mana. The problem is the vast majority of the time you're rather go you're better off going for blighted ravine or avalanche uh even though you're, you're dealing less damage uh you do benefit from keeping that that spell man in the back um uh, being able to heal your nexus by three uh, as you're enlightened is very neat but if you're playing a nivia by that point you're resorting to cards like ruination or um or the harrowing uh, right or rekindler etc like i feel like you, you still benefit more from being able to play like because blighted ravine still heals you right it heals you one less like this card does one more on both ends both healing and and uh aoe damage but it's so much more expensive that i have a hard time this card will ultimately be you know uh it's a bit sad saying if you know from the froyard card right because froyard is arguably one of the weakest uh, regions in the game right now but i do feel like it's it's got quite a bit of competition and i i don't see right now a reason to play this over those cards right i feel like you still go Vlad ravine and avalanche and i feel like you still go it that stares over this maybe i'm wrong and then we have perhaps my favorite i know a lot of you <laughs> i've seen i've seen the memes I agree. We got strategic execution because I actually freaked the fuck out when I saw this card. I was like, I, I, I always just wanted to make a video purely for it just because of this card. And I get to do that now. Strategic execution. Motherfucking Noxus City Yasuo, bitches. Four mana, slow speed spell. I love this design. I've always been a big advocate of flexibility incorporated onto cards in Legends of Runeterra. I think it's very healthy for the game. And oh my god, I love this specific version of it. We have a four mana slow speed spell that stuns two enemies. It is, um, basically it's a Crescent Strike for Noxus. And keep in mind that even though Crescent Strike is three mana, you're always spending some sort of uh, mana to generate it, right? Like you're either going for the super cool start chart generated by Zoe, you spend one mana on Zoe, or, and you have to spend two mana on the super cool start chart to generate that, or just just generating it off of uh, uh, out of like a spacey sketcher or uh, the fangs you know back when it was relevant etc etc right like we already know that Crescent Strike is amazing. Crescent, Crescent Strike is one of the things that have really uh, kept Target up there and it's a very very menacing card. Having access to that but also this design is so damn clever because the biggest weakness one of the good aspects of Crescent Strike is that you fish for it with a, an invoke right and in certain in certain stages of the game if you don't need it you can generate something else like the messenger for example or a charger to apply pressure or and or cycle through your deck in this case the way they 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 do that and they make up for the fact that you there are some cases in which you you know you would top deck this and you don't really need a slow speed stun at that stage of the game 
they give you the option to spend six mana and summon a motherfucking legion general. That is just like brilliant. Like, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Legion General, in case you don't know, is a 5-mana 4-4 four, four that gets plus 1, plus 1. has Fearsome. and gets plus 1, plus 1 for every unit that you've recalled and stunned this game. So it is a late-game boss that now you can generate with this. And you can actually... It gives you much... It, it, it makes stun decks more cohesive. I think you could definitely play this in just Jin decks alone, but also with jo with Yasuo as well. It's such a great card. It, it, it really is legitimately good and competitive and really fun as well. And it, it exact, like it empowers uh, a side of Noxus that has been a little bit weak in the past. And I just feel like this card is just like, it is perfection. Like strategic execution is perfection and I could not rate it any higher, man. And I'm so excited to build decks with it. And I just, how I said that I like these cards. I love these. I love like... You know, all this shit, like the Harbinger of Thralls. I'm going to play some Thralls. I love the wind, uh, the Winding Light. Revna, the Lore Keeper. The Deep Cards. The Deep Cards are so good, dude. Oh, my God. Lord Broadmain. The Harrowing Return. Uh, you know, I, Lurk is okay, I guess. <laughs> but, man. Oh, my God, man. Like, such... Oh, this expansion is just... Craigasm. Craigasm Incarnate. That's that's where I, I, I've been. I've been like ram. I've been rambling for twenty eight minutes. Oh my god! I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I just really like this expansion, basically, and I'm really excited to, uh, you know, start brewing, start recording, and start pumping out the content. And hopefully, you guys are excited as well. And I'm gonna stop talking. I'm a solo day. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for daily Legends of Runeterra content. Annie is the shit, in a good way. <laughs> what do you think about her? Let me know. And yeah, I'm gonna stop rambling. Love ya. I'll see you tomorrow.